So when you open 3D Coat, you'll be presented with a screen similar to this one. The middle window here that you can see presents you with some workspaces to get you started. Uh, we are going to be concentrating on this one, the poly modeling workspace, but it doesn't mean that I'm limited to this workspace once I select it. At any time I can jump in to any of the other workspaces. So let's select poly modeling and get started. Inside the modeling workspace, you can see here that we've been given a list of tools on the left side and some panels on the right side. We know we're in the modeling workspace because we have this option here and if we use the drop down menu we you can see that we can change the workspaces at any time. So we're not limited to just this modeling workspace at all. We can jump over to a sculpt, paint or UV workspace just by selecting one of those options. The tools in 3D Coat can be shared between workspaces. This is sometimes confusing for beginners, but we'll go through that later. The panels on the right side of the screen here can be docked or can be dragged out of their position at any time. We can add more panels by going to Windows, Panels, and for example, I can choose poly, mo poly models as an extra panel, which I could then dock here and maybe delete this one. So at any time, I can change the layout of my modeling workspace to suit the way that I work. If at any time you want to revert back, you can go to Windows and then here it says restore this page layout to default. And then we get back what we had at the beginning. If I customize this in a certain way, then I can always save that by storing the page layout. And then I can bring this back when I start an, a new session. Some of these panels have their own icons. So for example, I've just pulled this polygroups panel away from its docked position on the right side and you can see that its icons have followed it. Some of these icons are shared between panels and by that I mean they have a common function. So for example here you can see the duplicate and this, does, this means to duplicate a model. On the sculpt tree panel, you can see we've also got a duplicate, which would mean to duplicate a sculpt object. So there are similarities between them, but there are also specific icons to do with each panel. Some of the tools on the left hand side of the screen, you may notice I've got these small arrows in the corner. This represents that there are additional tools hidden behind the one that you can initially see. These are groups of tools which have a similar functionality. So for example, we have 3D primitive and a 2D primitive in the same group. They have the same functionality of producing a primitive object. We can see down here on the free move tool that we have two other tools associated and grouped with it for scaling and rotating. If we move up to the top of this window here, we can see we have the stroke mode. So this is a small icon and it brings out a pop-up menu of different strokes, curves and selection options. We can also access the same key here by hitting E on the keyboard and that essentially brings the same panel to our cursor. It may be strange to think inside of a modeling room that we have what seems to be painting tools. These are common tools for the paint room and also for the modeling room. In the modeling environment, these are more associated with selection methods. So for example, these strokes would enable us to select 
vertices on a single on a, on a single basis whereas these tools here like the rectangular marquee and the lasso would enable us in the same way we do in any other 3D application lasso marquee a number of vertices edges or faces you can also see here that we have a curves option which is a really powerful modeling tool and that's one of the reasons why we have the curves tree over on the right hand side so at any time we want to select we can hit either this small icon or the E key on the keyboard to bring up this panel above the selection here we have another met options which run across the top of the interface. These are selections which are very similar to Photoshop. When you select a tool in Photoshop, for example, you have a list of properties associated with that specific tool. So here you can see we have the icon repeated and also the name of the tool repeated as well. And these are associated with the selecting in this case. So for example, over on this side you can see we have different selection options for vertices, edges and faces. We also have this auto option here which selects these on the fly for us whenever we roll over one of the corresponding selection methods. On the other side of those, we have these tools here, which essentially can clear any selected items that we choose or invert them on a polygon basis or an object basis. We'll look at these a bit more detail when we get some geometry in the scene. If I change the tool now, and let's say I select the Add and Split tool, you see that our menu here changes. We have these additional options here. Simple checker. If we use click on here, you'll see that we have some checkboxes here which will help us. For example, when we're modeling, we may want to see a smooth view rather than a flat edge view of our polygons. We may need to hide sharp edges that we set or UV seams or remove the retopology or the wireframe that we have on our model. The next pop-up is our UV set. So we can add and delete and rename our UVs inside this room. You may notice if I scroll down here, our own method here of creating our UVs inside the modeling room. 3D Coat can also UV in a separate workspace. But it's good when you're modeling to have these tools available to you so you don't need to go into any other workspace. It just speeds up the workflow. The next option to the side of that is again to do with the UV. Here we can select and move our UV shells from one UV set to the other. The radius option allows us to select smaller or larger areas based on the value that we have inside this box here. So we can increase and decrease this value. So if I wanted to, for example, select a specific vertex here on my model, I would decrease the value in here to be more accurate in my selection. And if I wanted to uh, select a large area of vertices, and obviously I just increase the value and the same goes for edges and face. Our main headers across the top here have a function as well associated with each specific workspace. Some of these are common between all workspaces. For example, the file and edit menus You'll find these in the other workspaces as well. The edit menu, for example, is where I changed the preferences to create this green color. The view menu is another menu item which is common. We can use this for hiding back faces, 
turning on the wireframe, setting our grid sizes and snapping values as well. Symmetry is exactly what it means. It gives us the option to symmetrize our models and work in symmetry. The mesh option here is specific to the modeling room. At any time we can pull these windows, these menus, sorry, off and have them by our side to help. The mesh option here gives us specific things for sculpt for, for our models in terms of our sculpt mesh. We can also apply symmetry when we're creating as well and importing and exporting models. We'll look at this in more detail later on. The baking menu here, we also find the baking menu inside of the retopology room, but we can bake directly from the modeling room. Again, it's a little bit like the UV area. We can UV in a different workspace, but we can also UV in this workspace. Similarly, we can bake in the retopology workspace, but we can also bake in the modeling room as well. There is another example of an overlap between workspaces. The curves menu here, if I drag this one out, is extremely important and again is obviously associated with our curves tree when modeling. And we've already looked at our Windows panel. This is a way we can store and arrange our UI the way we like it. If you work with scripts at all, this is a place where you can create your own scripts for modeling. And finally, we have our help menu, just in case you need to either update your version of the program or reference the manual, the YouTube site, for example. And also we can upload our images, whatever we create inside of 3D code. The additional options at the top here are to do with our tools as well. The additional tools across the top here also help us. We will look at these in a bit more depth later when we have some geometry in our scene. Another area of interest on our UI is these set of icons here, which can help us along with our navigation um, and, to, and also things like our orthographic projection and perspective, uh, our grid turning on and off. And these are just a quick quick ways to access some screen uh, elements. For example, here we can display our axes if we need it. We can turn on and off the grid using these icons. We can also select our environment maps and so on and so forth. We'll go through these again in more detail. But here we can also see with this camera icon here, we can also access different views as well as saving our views as well. And this can be useful, particularly when modeling, uh, where we're working around a particular part of a model and we can orbit around that particular part. We can also set our reference images here as well, which is also useful. We could do the same thing from these sides as well and hide those references from this menu here. So this concludes our introduction to the UI. In the next chapter, we'll have a look at navigating around the scene. Thanks for watching.